fallout, smoke, women crying for their sons because their sons are not, Romans killing riotous groups that are rising up, free Judea, free our people, autonomy for Israel. You had Herod and Edomite and his dynasty, Herod's ruling, killing any potential threat, any potential Messiah. Then you had the Pharisees and the Sadducees that we learn from Josephus are not Jews by birth. No. Brother and sister, they are there. We are not lost. We are scattered. We are original Hebrews. Let's go! All praise and be to the most higher Yeah, I say it. From my, I was a fortune to meet my grandparents. Whom from childhood had always made us to understand that we are one of the lost tribes of Israel. One of the lost tribes of Israel. One of the lost tribes of Israel. Hey, so now we are on our way from Ahafia to Arochuku. So we're going to travel in all around. This is also an ancient city, the Warriors. Yeah. They call it the Ephraimite. Okay. The Ephraimite. Let me show you around. Yeah, Britain, the Ephraimite. Yes, Ephraimite. Yeah. Ephraimite. Yes, Ephraimite. So they're living. This particular place, they uh, say that they're from the tribe of Ephraim. Yeah, Ephraimites. The Ephraimites. And ethnicity is a cult. What's up, Zion Dynasty? I'm back. I'm in the flesh. I'm in the state. Your favorite dreaded Israelite, the man, the myth, and the legend. You rule but I am Raheem of the tribe. Oh, I'm so hyped right now, y'all. But well, I'm telling y'all, I gotta, keep, I gotta contain. We finna deal with this, y'all. So, let me say something. It's so much I want to say, but I'm just gonna talk a little bit. Family, the Most High Yah has a beautiful way of when He has called you to something, you can't escape it. You can't rest. You can't do this. You can't do that. The Most High will make sure that everything He's placed inside of you. You cannot run from it. You will fulfill everything that he's ordained. I gotta tell y'all, I have been doing a lot of research behind the scenes, going into a lot of supplemental information, going into a lot of the Book of Mormon, the plates of Nephi, the plates of Morani, Apocrypha, America in the end times, the native Moorish populations that were in the Americas before Christopher Columbus, going into the Natick Moors, going into the Cherokee, the Chickasaw, the Choctaw, the Creek, the Seminole Indians that a lot of our people are related to, looking at some literature by Dane Calloway, going into, like I said, the Book of Mormon, um, the sealed portion of Ephraim. It's been a lot that I've been trying to gather and get together for you guys. But the Most High knows that when he needs you to do this work, all of that can wait and you got to get back on the battlefield because there is a spiritual attack against Ephraim. Y'all, there's so much I would want to share with y'all, but I'm going to jump right into it. As you guys may or may not have seen, our brother Elder Benaiah Israel did the rebuttal video. I don't know what he's trying to rebuttal about Ephraim and David's lineage. Now, there's so much I want to go into. I might have to do some more videos just to kind of get worn back up into going over that history in detail. But y'all, basically the premise is that David's lineage and the eyesight of the Most High is Ephraim. Now, I know this was controversial. I didn't know it was going to be this controversial. Um, the Most High has been showing me a lot about Northern Kingdom, a lot of Northern Kingdom being in the Americas, a lot of that being connected with Morocco and those Moorish Sephardic Israelites that left Africa and went to the Americas due to, now this started as early as 600 BC, um, as the Book of Mormon talks about, but we know that it ramped up during the time of the Inquisition when the Jews, but the Danyayas, the Abarbanels, also never ceased to trace their origin to King David. Y'all watch this. Those related to the David family, we find 
after the expulsion of the Jews from Spain, we find them in Morocco. When the Jews and Moors of Spain were banished out of Spain and Portugal in 1492 by King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella. So now y'all need to take notes because I might just start just dropping knowledge, dropping facts. I'm going to try to pull some of these books out. So I'm going to show you guys a little bit of what I've been kind of researching lately. Uh, the, the sealed portion of Ephraim, shout out to brother Ayil Ben Ephraim, that elder, I'm telling you, him and Big Judah in terms of going into the Book of Mormon's relevance to our people, to Northern Kingdom is unparalleled family. That's why I've been tagging in him in a couple of the posts because this elder has gone into a lot of detail on that and I'm trying to kind of ingratiate my family with that knowledge, right? Now, this whole ordeal about Native Americans, Latina Americans, African Americans, you all may have heard that from the traditional Israelite camps. They've been teaching that, you know, Blacks, Native Americans, and Latin Americans, you're the tribes of Israel. Now, y'all have heard me say on the channel that I don't agree with the 12 tribes chart. I feel like it's, it's more westernized. It doesn't highlight the African tribes, the Native tribes, and that kind of thing. But at the same time, that is a nugget and a revelation that the Most High himself gave to your Bishop Nathaniels, your IUIC, these different camps that received that revelation that the curses, Deuteronomy 28, follow the children of Israel family. This stuff is monumental. I've been researching and reuniting with my own family. I didn't know my biological dad. I'm doing this research, I ran into my sister, y'all, my, my father's daughter, sons, and I've been going into their history like crazy, tracing their oral tradition, and come to find out that Yoruba Nigerian Moorish element is linked to the Native American element. Your Cherokee, your Choctaw, I have ancestors that are 100% Cherokee and I can prove it all the way down to my fifth generation on one lineage and all the way down to my seventh generation. That is my great, 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 seven times great grandfather being linked to 100% Cherokee Indian. So y'all I come with facts and I've been researching that stuff like crazy because these camps have been on to something, but the link to proving that history is the Moorish history. That is the key, because a lot of these native tribes are linked to that Moorish Sephardic migration of Israelites that came into Brazil, that's your Latin element, and that those Brazilian Latino, Ladino groups went also to the Americas on your Eastern portion. They say the first settlement was in New York, um, they say they migrated to places like Virginia, Tennessee, Hancock uh, County, Kentucky, Georgia, that southeastern region, Alabama, Mississippi. This is where you see the majority of those, they call them the five civilized tribes. I don't like that. That's what they call them. When you get into your Creek, Seminole, Cherokee, Choctaw, and Chickasaw Indians that are Moors, these Natick Moors, these are Ephraimite Moors, and I'm going to do a screen display that I've been doing all this research proving it through talking to my own ancestors, reunited with my family. I was supposed to be meeting my sister, my blood sister, that they never knew I existed through doing this work and going into proving us being Israel. I have oral tradition from my great, 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 great grandparents, knowing that they were Brazilian Sephardic Israelites of the Northern Kingdom of Ephraim. So y'all, the Most High has given me so much information that to prove all of y'all, it's gonna take time and to show y'all all these documentations I'm um, going into uh, the Book of Mormon, uh, Doctrines and Covenants, uh, the Pearl of the Great uh, Price, uh, the Book of Mormon, that's just another copy I have. Um, also, the seal portion of Ephraim, I've been going into that. Also, family, y'all probably like, y'all, I done got like 20 books since the last time I've talked to you guys. Dane Calloway, y'all probably known him. He's the one that really sparked when he, he showed clips by Dr. King where Dr. King said the Negro has become a stranger in his own land. Y'all, I gotta let y'all know. The Americas was given to Northern Kingdom Ephraim as an eternal possession. Whereas Africa and Northeast Africa, the Middle East as we call it, was where all 12 tribes were united in that Canaan area after they were banished out of that region in 70 AD, a lot of them went into Africa and a lot of Northern Kingdom had already been in Africa during the time of the fall of the Assyrian Empire that the anthropologist Derek Lang says took place around 605, 600 BC is when a lot of those Ephraimites, that Northern Kingdom, those 10 tribes, 
they migrated, and I'm gonna show y'all a picture of that. They migrated into North Africa and settled in what we know as Nigeria today. Now, a lot of them have been living in that region for times immemorial, like, and I showed y'all the um, Wifrain Jewish Encyclopedia, our Jewish virtual library that talks about that ancient Moroccan Ephraim settlement. So basically the Moors was the period where all of these indigenous Berber Ephrati families came together in Africa and Arabia because they went through that region to get into Africa. Those Arabian Ephraimites, those African Ephraimites, and those Granada Ephraimites that had already been there, they rallied. This is why, now I know this is a lot y'all, and I'm gonna go through this on subsequent videos. This is why Morocco and the Moroccan American Treaty is the longest American unbroken treaty in world history and in American history. It's the longest unbroken treaty. And it was between America and Morocco. Now this stuff gets very deep, y'all. Y'all gotta check out those Moroccan videos. But basically, Morocco was the first country to recognize America as the independent nation that she is today because many scholars and researchers believe that America knew they were operating on Moroccan soil. A lot of those Moorish Ephraimites were in the Americas. Some people say Christopher Columbus was a crypto Jew and that he had Moors on his ship that took him to navigate him to the Americas and back and forth between West Africa through the triangular trade route. He had to receive a license from Queen King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella or Seville, Spain to engage in this. In the same year that those Moorish Jewish Israelites were banished out of Spain. So in 1492, Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue. And that same year, King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella banished 1.5 million Israelites, Jews and Moors out of Spain, and they were seeking refugee, or, or seeking refuge, right? A lot of them went into Morocco and went deeper into West Africa among the Nigerians, but even more of them went to the Americas. Now, these were the wealthy ones that had the money to have ships. They were going to the Americas because a lot of their brothers, a lot of those Moors were already over there. So y'all, it's so much history, y'all. I'm just giving y'all a brief catch up of what we're gonna have to go into. Now, back to this Benea Israel stuff. Now y'all, this is about to get intense a little bit. Um, <laughs> get kind of emotional. Um, but basically, y'all seen the brother's rebuttal video which is not a rebuttal video. I watched the video. He cannot disprove Ephraim. And to all of my Ephraimite scholars, shout out to Nazare Hebrew Assembly, shout out to Will, son of Yah, shout out to brother I Elder Ayil ben Ephraim, shout out to Hebrew Institute of Learn. It's just so many of y'all, Big Judah, shout out to Dane Calloway even, that go into Ephraim's oral tradition, right? That go into us as a people being linked to the so-called lost tribes of Israel family there is a difference between being an ancient israelite and being a jew now i know this is a lot there's a difference between being an ancient israelite and a jew our people don't claim to be jew oh yeah i know we ain't jews to all the judah folks yeah we saying we judah the majority of so-called african americans are actually northern kingdom israelites israelites not jews or judah how do I know this? Now let's give, so y'all that don't understand the terminology, I'm gonna break that thing down as simple as I can. There are 12 sons of Jacob. These 12 sons became mighty families or tribes. These 12 tribes make up the nation of Israel. These 12 extended families. 10 of these families sided with Ephraim leading them, the royal house of Joseph, to be separate from the other two, Judah and Benjamin, because Solomon, in his affinity for all these other strange women, he slept and married other women to enact treaties with those countries to have peace. That's the history of Israel. He gained peace by having marriages with all these other strange women, and he raised the taxes on Israel to pay for his extravagant lifestyle, his extravagant ventures. This is the sad history, family. He had a son named Rehoboam. When Rehoboam came on the scene, the elders told Rehoboam, they said, lower the taxes. Have mercy on your own people. I know you've been trying to make all these other nations happy, 
but have mercy on your own family, on the children of Israel, and lower the taxes. Rehoboam listened to some knucklehead Negro friends of his, some other Israelites, and they said, man, you don't got to do that, man. You the king, you do what you want to do. So Rehoboam comes out and says, my pinky finger is stronger than my daddy loins. And he raises the taxes even more. And Northern Kingdom says to your tent, so e oh Israel, we don't want to have nothing to do with the house of David. Now, the history of this family is in that moment, the Most High reveals to Jeroboam and Ephrathite. We see this in 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 26. He says that I'm going to take these 10 parts, these 10 tribes, and they're going to be under your dominion. So Northern Kingdom basically chooses their own Ephrathite because in 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 26, the Bible declares that Yarubah, our King Jeroboam, was an Ephrathite. Most of us scholars and most of us Israelites know that he was an Ephraimite. That gets really strange because wait a second. That same word Ephrathite that is used for Yarubah, our King Jeroboam, is the same word that's used for David. That's the first nugget. We see that in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 12, when it recounts David's lineage. And this is where the Most High revealed to me as an ambassador for the Northern Kingdom with the mantle of Joseph on my back to resurrect with the help of all the elders and all those scholars that have came before me to stand for Ephraim, that is the 10 tribe confederation of the Northern Kingdom of Israel. That is when the Most High revealed to me that son of man, David, or Dawood's lineage, is actually in my eyes an Ephraimite. I, I, I can't, I, it was like it was yesterday, family. I was sitting down studying a book called Light and Truth. Let me show y'all that book. And shout out to Bishop Nathaniel of IUIC. Uh, he had been going through this book a lot on his Shout Out Tuesdays. And it talks about how the word more is the same as Negro. And that those Moors, the other people knew, were Israelites by ethnicity. Now, some of those Israelites practiced Islam and created the religion of Islam to be separate from the Ish people that called themselves Jews and those other European Edomites that created the religion of Christianity. And I'm talking about Roman Catholicism. Our people wanted to do, we didn't even want to be called like them. So this is where Islam came in. Now, Islam had more to do with like a Essene, Sadducee-ish, um, Ebionite kind of group rather than a religion that it is today. But back then, our forefathers rallied behind this submission to Yah concept and they rallied to be able to push those European Edomites out of Spain. We took control over Spain, governed Africa and Arabia and the Americas for near 800 years from 711 CE to 1492. Now this started under the leadership of Tariq Al, um, uh, what is his name? Tariq Al Sudan, I think his name is. Um, but Tariq uh, was this military leader that galvanized all these Moors in 711 and we ruled. But those Moors by ethnicity were actually Moorish Ephraimites that had been in North Africa since time immemorial, right? Now, a lot of these Ephraimites refer to themselves as Ephrati. When you look at Abraham, Ha'afrati, when you look at El Kahina, Daya, and I'm, I've done lessons on this family, and I'm going to have to do more refreshers on it, but this is North African history of the so-called Berbers. Now, Berber is a, is, a, is a term that they don't call themselves. They call themselves Amazaic, which means noblemen or freemen. Now, when I, now keep that word freemen in mind when we go into the Nazis. Now, a lot of these Fremen, these noble Amazaics of North Africa, a lot of them also were in Spain, these Iberian groups. How do we know this? This is the oral tradition of the Yoruba of Nigeria. These Iberian Ephrati were in North Africa, were in Lower Spain, they migrated to the Americas, and they also migrated into what is Nigeria today but they call themselves Ephrati. Why is the word Ephrati so important, family? The word Ephrathite is Strong's Concordance, H673. It is Ephrathite and Ephraimite. Wait, what, JB? Y'all check this out. If you look up in a Hebrew concordance, 
the word Ephraimite in the Hebrew, it is H673, which is Ephrati. The same title that these Amazaics of Morocco and North Africa called themselves during the time of the Moors. But not just that, not just is Ephraimite Ephrati H673 in the Hebrew, Ephrathite is the same word, family. This is the word that is used for King Yarubah or Jeroboam in 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 26. David, King David himself, family, was referred by the Most High Yah in scriptures as an Ephrathite. Now, there is a lot of contention re regarding that, but I'm going to put it on the screen for y'all. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 12, the scriptures declare that now David, the son of Jesse, the Ephrathite from Bethlehem in Judah. Now, in that scripture, we see David referred to as an Ephrathite through his father, Jesse. Now, a lot of people are going to say, well, Ephrathite can also mean a person that lives in Bethlehem. Let's look at the context to see if that makes sense. The scriptures would then say, now David, the son of Jesse, the dweller in Bethlehem, Judah, from Bethlehem in Judah. It doesn't fit the context, family. So if you take Ephrathite and Google it in a Strong's Concordance, it tells you that it is a descendant of Ephraim. Now let's go back to 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 12. Now David, the son of Jesse, the Ephraimite from Bethlehem in Judah. Now this is where a lot of our people don't put their think caps on. A lot of y'all come into this walk from a religious standpoint. You, you just came out of the Christian church where you were just believing what they were telling you and you didn't fact check it. Now you come into this awakening and everybody tells you that you're Judah or well, every African American is Judah and every this person. That's where I fall out with the 12 tribes chart. It's not feasible and it doesn't make sense. If there's 12 tribes and 10 of them were Ephraim and the other two were Judah, according to mathematics, most Israelites would be Ephraimites or under the jurisdiction of the 10 Northern Kingdom tribes. It only makes sense, family. Not just that, but if you look at the oral tradition of the Yoruba and the Igbo, the Igbo claim Manasseh, Zebulun, Issachar, Gad, they claim Northern Kingdom or Ephraimite tribes. The Yoruba claim to be descendants of the Northern Kingdom of Israel through the royal family of Ephraim themselves. This is verified by the Jewish Diaspora Encyclopedia. The Cambridge article verifying the oral tradition of the Yoruba by Ulysses Santa Maria. This is also verified uh, by Tudor Parfit, Edith Bruder, anthropologist Derek Lane. Y'all, it's too many facts, too many receipts. The Jewish Virtual Library is too many receipts that I've shared on the channel that verifies the oral tradition of the Yoruba being the sons of Ephraim. Now, back to David being an Ephraimite. There has been a lot of craftiness with this whole Ephraimite stuff. I've reached out. I've reached out to Pastor Kelly because his cousin is Benaiah Israel. I have messaged Benaiah Israel. I have commented on his post to reach out to the elder to none avail. They're playing a very shysty game. They're first cousins and they're looking out for each other. I'm just going to keep it straight because any person caught in between something like that where you're seeing these two elders come against this young man that if y'all look at all my videos, all I have done was give honor to Benea Israel, to Pastor Kelly, to Teo Ministries because of the work that they've done. They turn around and bash me revealing Ephraim to the people and instead of going to me in private, they bash me. So when I come out with the smoke, then Pastor Kelly comes and says, well, you could have handled that a better way. I'm like your cousin. Well, give me his number if you don't want to be in between it. Allow me to have his number. I can reach out to the brother and we can talk behind the scenes to show that unity and show that family within the community. A lot of these Negroes have thug niggerish tendencies. They don't really want to build family. They really don't want to build community. They really don't want to have a conversation. They want to do bash messy type videos to come against somebody rather than sit down and have a conversation. I got to give y'all God's truth. That's just the facts, right? Because if you're in between that, it is your duty as unto the Most High Yah as an elder. 
and you seen your first cousin, an elder, coming against this young man and you can't refute Ephraim, but you keep calling it an Ephraimite deception, bashing the oral tradition of the Yoruba, and I've showed y'all the clip of the Nigerians themselves talking about the Ephraimite city dedicated to Daya or El Kahina, the Ephraimite princess. Y'all, it's too many facts. It's too many. So when I see them getting down like that, I got to let y'all know. I got to keep it straight. Because Pastor Kelly is wanting to play this, this in-between where I didn't have nothing to do with it. But then you've done lessons to retaliate against the teachings yourself after I started teaching this. I got to give y'all God's truth. And I've gone to him and said all of this behind the scenes. And then when your brother does an e e from, or your cousin does an Ephraimite deception post, you get in the comments and say, yeah, and you team up against other people that are trying to say, y'all don't do this to brother JB and that kind of thing. You team up in the comments against it. Then I reach out and say, well, can I, can we all sit down and talk about this? Can we do a three-way on the phone and talk about this? Then you don't want to do it. Well, I can't really get in touch with my cousin. I can't really do all that. You know, uh, you know, he get in his ways and he do his own thing. But then you're going to attack me, but you're not going to call out the evil of him coming against this brother for no reason. You're not going to say, yeah, my cousin was wrong for doing it. So then you're not going to come against your cousin and say and rebuke that thing. Because y'all, we got to have some common sense real quick. It's not that many of our people that know we're Israelites. So your first cousin or your cousin is an e is, is an Israelite, a well-known historian, a well-known teacher, and you don't talk to him on a regular basis, and y'all around the same age. Y'all both been doing this work. It's already a lonely journey, family. You're being disingenuous. You talk to him. Tell him to stop coming against this young man teaching this knowledge or sit down and have a conversation and we can do that as men and as family, as leaders and as elders, and he's a young man, that show that unity and encouraging that generation finding out this history, going into that scholarship and that kind of thing. They don't want to do that, family. And I'm just going to let y'all know that's what's been going on. So now I'm coming out and I'm dealing with this David lineage thing. And the brother brings up how Boaz, now we're going to go into the book of Ruth because this is going to show you why in 1 Samuel, the Most High calls David an Ephraimite. We see in Psalms that the Bible also calls David the firstborn of the Most High Yah. Why is this? Because of the Leverite story. The story of the book of Ruth family. We're going to go into that. So in the book of Ruth, it sets this whole stage up for what is going on. Brother Benaiah is stomping in the video. Oh, we got all this evidence that Boaz is Judah, that Boaz goes up, goes back to Pharaoh's. That is deception, family. Why is it deception? That's a straw man. I'm not even arguing that. What I'm saying has nothing to do with Boaz's lineage and the moral of the story of Ruth has nothing to do with the lineage of Boaz. That's where you miss the wisdom of the Most High Yah. That's not the moral of the story, family. The moral of the story was Naomi's husband died. Naomi's husband was dead. Her two sons were dead. She left when her, her town of Bethlehem didn't have anything to go to Moab to sojourn just to come back as a laughing stock because her husband's dead, her two sons are dead, and a lot of y'all might not know African culture. African culture means the nearest of kin has the right to take the possession that she had because it's a patriarchal society. What do I mean by that? When a husband was married to a woman and he had a house with that woman, if he died, his nearest of kin could have that house, have that land, have that farm, and the woman does not really have that much rights. I'm just telling y'all the history. And this is the culture practiced in Africa today. It's a patriarchal society that goes back to the law of the Most High Yah. So, but the danger of this is that the woman could almost come out of it with nothing. And that's the sad part of the book of Ruth. The father is not an unloving father where he loves his sons more than his daughters. But with the culture, certain wicked people can use that to neglect these women. So Naomi is coming back to Bethlehem with this fear that she doesn't have her husband to cover her. She doesn't have her two sons. She doesn't have a place to lay her head. And a lot of the town people say, that's Naomi, Naomi's back. And she's like, don't call me Naomi because Naomi means pleasant, are beautiful or sweet and she says call me Mara Mara means bitterness right 
because she said the most high has stripped me of everything because she's coming from a place of I don't have anything. This is the heartbeat of the book of Ruth. It is showing the pain that this woman has. She even tells her daughters-in-law, she says, y'all go back to your own land. Go back to your own land. Don't stay around with me. I'm cursed. My God is judging me. Just leave, right? So she's in this kind of state and Ruth says, I ain't going nowhere. Let your God be my God. Wherever you lay your head, that's where I'm gonna lay my head. So Ruth has this spirit within her that will not give up on her mother-in-law. And that same spirit ends up getting her blessed. Now keep in mind, the lineage of Ruth is her husband, Elimelech. The, the father's lineage determines the tribe of the son. And in the book of Ruth, it tells you that Elimelech is an Ephrathite in Bethlehem in Judah. So family, we keep seeing these Ephrathites that are in Bethlehem in Judah. How did this happen? Now, I already showed y'all in the book of Genesis and chapter 35, we see that Rachel herself, who is the grandmother of Ephraim, dies on the way to Bethlehem. Her bones are buried in Bethlehem. I showed y'all the Cambridge, I think it was Cambridge author, um, that went into the settlement of these Ephraimites within Bethlehem. This happened because a lot of Ephraim felt a priority to the land of Bethlehem because their foremother or their grandmother Rachel died and was buried there. Now we also see in the book of Joshua chapter 15 that every, every city that belonged to Judah is listed and Bethlehem is not. So you're thinking like a colonist to take the land that was not given to Judah and say that this belongs to the tribe of Judah. Bethlehem was within the region of Judah, but did not belong to the tribe of Judah. That's the beauty of David and Christ and Yeshua coming out of Judah, but was not of the blood of Judah. Now we know in Judea, even during the time of Yeshua, you had multiple different tribes in that region. You had Levites, you had Benjamites, but in the, in the territory of Judah itself, you had a city that did not belong to, y'all understand this, you had a city that did not belong to Judah, but belonged to Ephraim because their foremother was buried there. This is confirmed in the story of Ruth, which is why Elimelech is called an Ephraimite, even though he was in Judah. Now that same Ephraimite Elimelech that was married to Naomi dies and her two sons Malon and Kilion are dead as well so now there is a breach within Ephraim right you needed a near kinsman to raise up that lineage brother Benaiah is saying kinsman in the Bible did not refer to somebody close of that tribe what Benaiah Israel that's that shystiness that's that ish. That's that stuff that our people, because they want to fight so bad. And there's this spirit, the same spirit that pit Joseph in the pit is the same spirit that Judah is operating in quick. Y'all got to hear me. Because Judah was the one that recommended to the other brothers in Genesis. He said, let's, let's not kill them. Let's sell them into slavery. Y'all got to see. So that spirit of the Jew is what funded the slave trade. Is what sold Joseph into. Y'all got to understand this. This is our history. And that same spirit is playing itself out. Because Brother Benaiah is saying kinsman does not mean kinsman according to the flesh. Come on, dude. According to the left or right custom, he had to be a near kinsman according to the flesh to be able to marry Ruth. Now, back to the story of Ruth. So Naomi has this daughter-in-law named Ruth. She is without her husband because those two Ephraimite boys die in Moab. Ruth is a Moabitess woman. Woman, that is why the Moors say they are Moabite Canaanite blood. The Moabites of Morocco, y'all, this stuff gets deep. That's why Joseph unites all of these black power groups together through the history of Ephraim. The Moors, shout out to all my Moors brothers, called David Daoud. And the star of Daoud was the oldest flag of Morocco before they changed it to the five-pointed star of the Ring of Solomon. Now, why is Morocco the home of the oldest Ephraimite settlement? Why do they have the Star of David on their flag? 
Why do they call themselves Ephrati, but they claim David? The Moors know this history, and they say that they have Moabite blood. That goes back to Ruth family. Now let's go back to Ruth. I'm dropping, dropping that nugget. All of this is verified by Cambridge, by the oral tradition of the Yoruba that say they came from Morocco. If you do a Jed match, you're gonna see admixture with North Africa, specifically Morocco. I had a sister say that she did her DNA and, and her sons are Moroccan and it lit up the entire continent. The Moroccans also owned America, which is why that's the oldest treaty, which is why the native Moorish groups that were in the Americas were already there before Christopher Columbus. Back to the story of Ruth, right? So with the story of Ruth, we see that Ruth is without a husband, her mother is without her husband, that there was a breach in that Ephraimite lineage. Now hence comes Boaz. Brother Benea created, created a straw man argument because I'm not arguing Boaz's lineage. That's the deception of these Negroes. I gotta tell you what it is. They're not trying to build. They're not, they don't love their people. They don't want to sit down and have a conversation. They want to thug and gang bang inside of a community based mystery. All of this is about family y'all. Us being Israel, us coming back together. But these Negroes have wicked mindsets that they want to gang bang instead of sitting down and you're an elder and you're old enough to be this dude's father. But you don't want to sit down and have a conversation and you don't want to want to encourage the brother that's teaching the people. I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna deal with it. So back to Ruth. So Ruth is without a husband and hence comes Boaz. Boaz is the kinsman redeemer. There was a kinsman of nearer kinsmen according to the flesh that refused to do the honor because he had a great name. Why does, what does that mean? Whoever was performing the Levirate, his whole purpose was, was, was sleeping with the widow is to raise up the breached lineage of a Limelech. So like if my cousin was married to a woman, my cousin is the fourth, right? And let's say he passed and I marry his wife and I have a kid. That kid's lineage is the fifth. That kid's lineage is accounted to my cousin that passed. That's the Levirate family. So with the book of Ruth, Boaz's lineage does not matter. That's the mystery that you don't get the moral of the story. The moral of the story is this woman's husband is dead. And it seems like she was forgotten. It seems like her daughter-in-law was forgotten. It seems like the Most High turned his back on Ephraim. It seems like a people that's surrounded by Judah would get assimilated and that tribe would lose its place within the very grave that their foremother died there. It seems like the tears of Rachel crying for Joseph because her seed is not, is gonna be forgotten. And that this family of Ephraim would lose their heritage, would lose their, 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 their tribal lineage. But that's not what the Most High allowed. He took Boaz through the lineage of Judah to marry Ruth and that son Obed continues the lineage of Elimelech. And this is the deception of these so-called elders. They have such a spirit of envy that really isn't Joseph envying Judah because the law first mentioned tells you that what was in the beginning is what will be in the end. And a lot of people quote the scripture that the Eve from envy will depart, but they don't know the first book of the Bible because in the first book of the Bible, we see that Joseph, the father of Ephraim, did not envy anybody, but was placed in a pit because of the envy of his brothers. And we don't know that which was, that which is, and the beginning is what is really the truth of the whole ordeal. That the envy of the Judean scribes and the Jewish narrative was to convince Eve from the so-called blacks and Native Americans and Latino populations that our history doesn't matter. That Judah has taken the preeminence. That the birthright of Joseph is done away with. Because a lot of y'all quote Genesis 49 that says the scepter will not depart from Judah until Shiloh comes. Who is Shiloh? Shiloh, if you Google search it, was a hill country within Samaria, which is the capital of Ephraim. So what is that verse saying? That the scepter would not depart from Judah until Joseph reemerged. That's the mystery. Oh, y'all gotta catch it. That's the mystery. 
because Jacob gave Judah the preeminence to lead the brothers because he thought Joseph was dead. So when he found out Joseph was alive, Joseph received a double portion and the patriarch Yaakov, Jacob himself, in Genesis 48, told Joseph that the way that Reuben and Simeon are my sons, my first and second born, is the same way that Ephraim and Manasseh are gonna be mine. And that the birthright, the crown, the authority would rest on the head of Ephraim, the younger brother, the way I was the younger brother, and the way my father was the younger brother. That's the power of Joseph family. So when we look at the book of Ruth, Boaz being of Judah is according to the flesh, but the beauty family is the faithfulness of the Most High Yah that through a sacred lineage, we have united both kingdoms together. That's the moral. But Banea Israel want to fight, want to say, oh, this going, let's get back to work. You know, I'm going to show y'all that clip of when the brother was trying to go, oh, we're going to pit that smoke. We're going to come against that Ephraim deception. Let me show y'all that clip. <laughs> Now, family, my brothers and sisters, it's time to roll up our sleeves and get back to work. 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 And most high willing, we will keep it simple and so basic that even a two-year-old can get it. Look at the look at the thing. Look at the look at the thing. Work. Look at the look at the thing. Look at the look at the thing. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Out. Look at the look at the thing. Look at the look at the thing. Work. Look at the look at the thing. Look at the look at the thing. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Yah willing, we will make a detailed review of the Ephraim deception. As well as That's the kind of niggerish, thuggish mindset that elders ought not to have, family. Because the beauty of this opportunity is to restore Joseph back to the love that the father had for him from the beginning and to reunite Judah, those two kingdoms, those two sticks, those two branches, Mormon and the Jewish scholars back together in harmony through a lineage that epitomizes that. Because David's blood, according to the flesh, is Boaz. But Boaz was just serving as the Levite to raise up the seed of Elimelech, the Ephraimite. So spiritually, everything that was on the head of Joseph rests on David and that lineage because the father of spirits sees David as an Ephraimite. But his physical blood is Judah. Let me show y'all another nugget. The natural lineage of Leah received the birthright because Leah gave birth, watch this, to the firstborn sons of Jacob, uh, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah. So Judah, because Reuben slept with his father's wife, Simeon and Levi did that wickedness, killing those men because of their sister, Dina, that she was raped, right? The next one up was Judah according to the flesh. So Leah represents the flesh lineage. But Rachel was the wife that Jacob loved. Y'all gotta hear this. Rachel was the wife that Jacob loved and toiled. He worked hard for his, his uncle Laban to be able to marry this woman. And she gave birth to Joseph and Benjamin. So Joseph received the spiritual birthright and the priority of the entire nation. The Most High performed that by showing Joseph that dream. And when Joseph had that dream, y'all gotta hear me, that man, I'm gonna be exalted above the other tribes. The Most High said, the way to go up is to go down. I'm gonna allow you to share that with your brothers and I'm gonna put a spirit of envy in them and they're gonna sell you into slavery. But them selling you into slavery would allow your gift to come forth and be raised to the top. And in you being raised up to the top, you could talk to Pharaoh during the time of the famine. And what would have killed the entire nation is now salvation. What meant to be damnation is now the salvation for the entire nation of Israel. Because now Joseph monitors all the grain within Egypt and is able to feed his brothers. And those same brothers that sold him into slavery now bow down before the tribe of Joseph. Y'all gotta hear this. And that's the mystery within David's lineage. The power 
y'all want. That y'all don't know what you coming against when you coming against Efrati. That's why America's blessed. Because this land was given to Joseph. Was given to Nephi. Through Morani. Through Mormon. Through the house of Joseph. And the mystery is in the book of Mormon. Nephi says that we come from the kingdom of Judah. Of the tribe of Joseph. Read it for yourself. So just because you were within that territory did not signify a tribe. That's the mystery. The Most High knew that Esau would covet Judah and take that tribe. But he tucked away Ephraim, which was the true salvation, within Judah and the borders thereof in Bethlehem. This is why in Micah it says that, O Bethlehem Ephratah, though you be least of the providences of Judah, yet out of thee shall come forth the governor that shall rule my people Israel. So Boaz's lineage didn't matter spiritually, but according to the flesh, he preserved the spiritual hegemony of Ephraim, Elimelech's lineage. And that same word that you turn into the next book, and guess what? The author of the book of Ruth is Samuel. And in Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 1, the Bible says Samuel is the Ephrathite from Mount Ephraim. Oh, so is this how Samuel knew about David? Because Samuel was an Ephraimite over here in Mount Ephraim, and he knew about the Ephraimites that lived in Bethlehem. He knew about his people. So when Saul fluked that first son of Rachel, because the kingship was the foundation of Rachel's lineage, this is why Saul was chosen. I'm gonna drop that nugget. So then Samuel says that now that they had their chance, I'm gonna go to one after Yah's own heart, which he knew about his own family that was in Bethlehem. Is that why he anointed David? And the Bible in the next book, which is also written by Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 12, it says, now David, the son of Jesse, the Ephraimite from Bethlehem in Judah, Yorubam and Ephraim of the tribe of Yosef, Y'all better hear me. So the Most High saw David as Ephrati. This is why the Moroccans say Ephrati. This is why they say Dahudi. This is why they say on their flag, they have the shield, they have the, the, the shield of David or the shield of Dawood. This star of David that was on the flag of Morocco was on their flag before the Jewish people got it. And those Moorish Moroccans, went to the Americas. This is documented. This goes back to the Book of Mormon, but not just that. This goes to the oral tradition of the Yoruba who went deeper into Africa. So you have this double fruit of this dual ethnicity of African American. That's why they call you two continents because our people were in both locations. I'm gonna drop that nugget because Morocco owned Africa during the time of the Moors and America. This is where you get into the creek Choctaw, Chickasaw, Cherokee, and Seminole Indian groups. This is where you get into the Basils and you get into the Melungeons and you get into a lot of these native populations and these families in the Americas that say, we always been here. This is why you might ask your grandparents and they say they're Native Americans. But this is why that native blood mixed with our people to, to take the Lamanites and the Nephites, y'all gotta hear this, and rejoin those two houses of Joseph, Ephraim and Manasseh, back as one family, one stick of Joseph and the hand of Ephraim that will be rejoined with the rest of Israel, Africa as one stick. Y'all got to hear me. And all of this history goes back to the blessing that the Most High put on Joseph that Joseph would have double fruit. Joseph, now let's deal with the double fruit. The double fruit goes into the royal house of Judah is sustained through David and the royal house of Ephraim, right? The northern kingdom was through Jeroboam. So you have Jeroboam, the Ephrathite, that is leading the northern kingdom. And you have the house of David, the Ephrathite, leading the southern kingdom, double fruit. The Most High had an Ephraimite lineage as the royal family of both houses. This is why you see the tribe of Joseph with the birthright can operate in all the different offices. This is why with Samuel's lineage, the scribes were confused because the Bible says Samuel is the priest, but Samuel is an Ephraimite. How is he operating as the priest and he's Joseph's seed? The birthright, the father through the birthright will pass on everything 
to that firstborn son that would inherit the birthright and it was up to that tribe to dispense the blessings to the other kids. Now, the mystery of that is with David that was able to wear the ephod in the holy place when he shouldn't have been able to do that as the king. What lineage has the right to do that? The birthright. And David knew that. This is why David went to get the Ark of the Covenant and knew where it was because the Ark of the Covenant used to be within Shiloh, which was a sacred object to the house of Ephraim, the son of Joseph. So y'all, it's too much facts, y'all. Um, but basically, I just had to deal with what Brother Benaiah is saying. Boaz, nobody is denying that he was Judah, but the Levirate custom meant that that child that was born between him and Ruth, Obed, would be the product of a Levirate and would be the seed of the deceased to resurrect him from the grave to sustain Ephraim. So the father sees him as Ephraim. Y'all might have to do a follow-up because this went longer than what I thought. The family might have to do a follow-up because this went longer than what I thought. I just had to show y'all what I've been, been researching. Um, your boy's all right, our family's all right. I still want to do some more giveaways and stuff. I've been kind of researching. Um, I got so many books. I got like 20 of them lined up that I, I want to go into this Moorish history. The history of our people is Moorish Ephrati. That is the mystery family. We are those Moors, those Shephardics. Some of them practice Islam. Some of them practice um, uh, Judaism. But they were of the same ethnicity of the so-called lost tribes, which are the 10 tribes of Joseph. A lot of them went to the Americas and some of them migrated to West Africa, but they were joined together through slavery in the Americas. And that family of so-called African-Americans are Moorish Ephraimites family. So y'all, I hope, I hope that was enough. I'm gonna listen to you guys' um, questions in the comments if y'all have any. But basically, David's lineage in the Most High's eyes is an Ephraimite. I can go into Christ, how the uh, Pharisees said that um, Christ, you're, you're a Samaritan, right? You're born of a devil, you have a devil. And Christ said, I don't have a devil. And the reason Christ went after the lost sheep the way he did is because Yeshua Christ himself knew the history of Dawood and knew that David, his whole life was about a Levirate. That is powerful, y'all. David's lineage is only alive because of the resurrection of the dead, right? Through Elimelech, through Elimelech and through the kinsman redeemer that is Boaz sleeping with Ruth to continue that Ephraimite lineage. So the Most High joined those two kingdoms together in peace through those two families, through that one lineage that represents both families, Judah by blood and Ephraim through the spirit. So y'all, I hope y'all got something, something from that. Um, it's a lot of research I'm trying to sift through y'all, but your boy's back. I'm doing good. Our family's doing good. Um, I just had to deal with all this smoke re revolving this stuff. The Most High has a beautiful way of getting us where we need to be. The Most High is letting me know, son of man, you got to stay on the wall with Ephraim. You have to defend this. Defend this heritage of Moorish Ephrati. I have so many books. I carry our research with us every day. My family history, history um, our birth certificates, marriage certificates. I have my genealogical tables and a little brown book I carry. My African ancestry that took me back to the Yoruba of Nigeria. Those Iberian but not Ephraim that were joined with the Ephraimites over here with the Moors. I have my ancestors that go back to full blood Cherokee Indian. I can prove that. Uh, my fifth grandfather, my seventh grandfather on multiple different sides of my father's lineage. Um, but yeah, y'all, our history is beautiful and the Northern Kingdom is the heartbeat of the ethnicity of the so-called black man. And if any of y'all find that book, um, Identity Regained, if y'all find that on Amazon, y'all let your boy know, they have taken that book down. Identity Regained says that the black man and so-called Native American are Ephraim. And I can't find that book on Amazon, on eBay, not even on Abe's bookstore because they're trying to hide this research family. They know that we are the so-called lost tribes. That's why even the African tribes we come from do not claim to be Jews. They claim to be, y'all check this out, they claim to be ancient Israelites, the lost tribes. That's Ephraim because you had those Moors that were in the Americas and you had Moors that migrated deeper into West Africa after those Moorish Ephraimites were banished out of Spain, right? And you also had some that were way back during the 600 BC with Nephi, but that's a lot more history. I'm gonna go into that on other videos, y'all. So y'all like this video up, y'all comment, share, subscribe. I love y'all, I've missed y'all. Uh, the most I said, son of man, you gotta come on and jump back into this thing. I'm still working on that research, but I'm gonna try to go ahead and get these, this content back out for y'all. 
Um, and if y'all still are interested in those giveaways, y'all comment that at the bottom as well. So I love you all with the love of the Messiah. Peace, love, blessings, and more Israelite power to the 12 tribes scattered. I love you all with the love of the Messiah. Be blessed. Shalom. All praises.